Right then, time for a little update. Hello, what's going on in the workshop? I've now got quite a big box of gauges that used to be in the cars and are being pulled out and replaced with more sensible options. Um, I took this dash out of the passenger side of the Manta. Um, it used to have an OEM Manta clock in it, but that went when I replaced it with a digital speedo fuel pressure and fuel level gauge for the co-driver, a couple of switches and the rally trip meter, which none of the co-drivers ever really knew how to use. And the sensors always used to get smashed off uh, on rallies. There's a bit of rust that came out of the sill of Goldie. It's been sat in here for five years and hasn't been exposed to any rain. So I can only imagine that there must have been rain trapped in the sills from years and years ago and it's rotted from the inside while it's been sat here. So anyway, the aforementioned dash used to sit here and it's been replaced with that triple pod, which has got the fuel pressure gauge, the fuel level gauge and an AFR gauge, which I showed James before when I was talking about changing to a fully mapped Omex injection setup. Um, when I took the dash off, I found that the circuit breaker that had been in place for the heated front screen had got smashed somehow. I don't know whether it still worked or not. I think it did. Anyway, it's been replaced with this little item. I've got a couple of them because it's 20 amps per side on the screen and these are 30 amps. But the previous one was 30 amps and it's never tripped. But you've got a little resettable with visual indicator uh, on the trip there. It's obviously just some Chinese thing, but I've got a couple of them. One to go in the spares box, one to go on there. there. We'll see how that works out. That's the existing ECU, which is an MBE. That's going to be replaced with the Omex one. Down here, we've got the fuse box that's been in there for about 15 years. If you look closely, you can see some of the terminal insulations melting. That means when it was set up, I didn't do the wiring on this, but when it was set up, there's little jumpers from the first terminal to the second, the second to the third, the third to the fourth. And obviously the first is carrying the current for all of them. So that needs replacing with a bus bar set up. So I've got this little item, which is another Chinese thing, but in the interest of testing, we've got to fit it, try it. You've got earth connection at the bottom and an earth bus bar, and then live at the top with um, blade fuses with a little LED that comes on that tells you when the when the fuse has blown. So that's going to be quite a trick and help with solving problems on events. Again, don't have many fuses blow, but when you see insulation overheating, you know something isn't right there. I've also got a little box to put fully put the relays in because they're currently just sort of suspended off the dash at the moment. So that's all coming out, a bit of rewiring. Um, and I had a play with the magnet for the speedo, which is over there. That still isn't right. That's going to need some further playing with. I'm not quite sure what's up with that because the magnet and the sensor are the right distance apart. The poles are the right way around. Um, it does seem in third, fourth and fifth gear to have some sort of scalar effect. So it thinks it's doing like 90, 130 and 180 miles an hour. So calibration might be an issue there. Uh, I'll have to have a look at that. That ammeter is coming out. The oil temperature gauge is coming out. I'm fitting a bigger oil cooler and I'm going to fit a temperature sensor before and after the oil cooler so I can see what effect it's having. I get a problem where I come to the end of a stage and the oil's got so hot that it's got thin and the car um, loses oil pressure and stalls after we, after we stop at the end of the stage. So I think the oil cooler will help a bit with that and I'm going to put a supplementary cooling fan on it. And as I say, I've got this digital, it's similar to that, spa design. I've got another one that's temperature, temperature. And the ammeter, that's currently the electric to the electric feed to the starter motor goes through that. And um, it's got tiny little terminals on it, which I'm not happy with. So I've got a shunt type one, which is a nice trick piece of kit, which is the last thing I'll show you on this gloriously sunny day, uh, which is this. It's actually intended for a boat. But it's got a shunt and then just low current terminals that go from the shunt to the digital ammeter. So, and that was like 60 quid. So just for me, it's more reliability, better connections on the, the main electrical feed, which if it falls off, it will kill the engine. And that there is a little mini moto carburetor that I've bought to go on my generator, which has got a Villiers engine and we've got an updraft carburetor, which you can't really get anymore. That was seven quid for that. 
So I'm going to whack it on. Oh, it's anyway, it's an air compressor. I'm going to whack it on there, see if we can get that working. There's a bit of 20 amp cable, which is going to be used in the wiring job. Um, and then the rest of what I've been doing has been mainly, mainly underneath, changing suspension bushes. Thank you for bearing with me for a full five minutes, if you did.